Hi, my name is Sarah Hunter. I'm going to be talking about social anxiety disorder and how you can treat that. Have you ever experienced nervousness or even being so uncomfortable in some situations that you feel like you can't even breathe or you can't even talk? If so, you might be suffering from social anxiety disorder. So social anxiety disorder is something that hits close to home for me just because I have suffered with this pretty much my entire life and it seems like it is getting quite a bit better. So. Um, I am here to tell you that if you suffer from social anxiety disorder, there are ways to get better at doing what you do without being constantly overwhelmed and held down by social anxiety disorder. So as far as social anxiety disorder goes, it can also be called the SAD, S-A-D. It's a condition or a mental health disorder where you feel like you're being watched, judged, observed in a negative manner. With that being said, a lot of people who do have social anxiety disorder are actually just mislabeled as shy. Um, in those cases, the people who are mislabeled as shy oftentimes don't get the help that they need just because they think that they're just shy. Social anxiety disorder, though, if you do have that disorder, it can be very, very hard to deal with, especially untreated. So social anxiety disorder, like I said, there's two different kinds of social anxiety disorder. It's going to be general and specific. With general, you're just generally have social anxiety disorder. It's just a, it's a general broad situation of you could have social anxiety disorder when you're talking to people, you could have it in social situations. It doesn't really matter. One situation isn't going to make you have social anxiety disorder. It's every situation that you feel like you could or you do have social anxiety disorder in. As far as specific, it's right there with its name, specific social anxiety disorder. That type is basically just when you have one type of fear that puts you over the edge when it comes to social anxiety disorder, um, whether that be talking in front of audiences or whether that be um, with your friends and you have to speak in front of them or you have, to, you have to perform something and you have social anxiety disorder in no other situations but just that one type. With that being said, both of those causes or both of those cases can go mistreated again as just shy and if untreated can be very, very hard to deal with. So like I said, without treating them, it can cause many problems with communication and that can affect your relationships um, at work as well as your relationships in your, your personal life. I know work opportunities can be missed because of social anxiety disorder. A lot of people who want to climb the ladder that have social anxiety disorder that can't present in front of people, present their opinions and their ideas and bring new things to the company, they miss out on those opportunities because of social anxiety disorder. I also know a lot of people who have relationships with their friends, with their family, their significant other. If they're unable to communicate due to having that social anxiety disorder factor, <clears throat> it can affect their relationships later on down the road because of communication issues. Communication is a huge thing in all relationships. Um, as far as social anxiety disorder, when it comes to um, when it happens, you can either have that happen in your younger ages or you can have that happen later on down the road as well. So when it comes to happening later on down the road, children would experience different symptoms than if it happens early on, of course. Children who have early onset social anxiety disorder can suffer from multiple different symptoms. Some of those would be not wanting to go to school and participate in fun activities with their friends, feeling like they're failing every day, um, basically just not wanting to go anywhere no matter what they're doing, whether that's schoolwork, whether it's a fun field trip, they don't want to go. That could be a sign that your child is suffering from social anxiety disorder. With older children, um, usually the signs of social anxiety disorder in older children are going to be the normal nausea, dizzy, dizziness, fainting, stuff like that. Stuff that we deal with um, in older years. So with social anxiety disorder, like I said, younger children, it is easier to treat. Um, there is a, a pretty cool research fact that I found out that children usually between 8 to 15 are diagnosed when it comes to social anxiety disorder. They're not diagnosed up until they're 8 and usually they're not diagnosed after, after they turn 15 unless it's in their later years. Um, although many anxiety disorders in children start at a younger age, like I said, it could not be diagnosed till about 8 to 15 and research shows that it's not shown to be diagnosed until around 8 to 15 years old. So those diagnosed with social anxiety disorder can sometimes develop um, or it can sometimes come from genetic patterns in their family. So you have genetics that can be an influence. You have the environmental factor that can be an influence. Um, the social factor could be an influence. Environmental, basically, the weather outside can influence us as, as people. If it's 
pretty outside, then we are a, a little bit more accumulated to be happy. If it's, you know, gloomy outside, then we feel a little bit more gloomy when it comes to how we act. Um, social factors can include the people that you hang out with, the audience that you are around constantly. Those can affect whether or not you have social anxiety disorder. The genetic factor, when it comes to genetics, um, a lot of people pass down social anxiety disorder. Um, according to one of my researches, Very Well Mind, if you have a first degree relative with social anxiety disorder, you may be two to six times more likely to develop that disorder. With that in mind, there is a total of one third of all diagnoses that comes from directly from genetics. Other than that, anxiety disorder is something that definitely does need to be treated as soon as possible. As soon as possible that you can get this treated, the, the better that your outcome comes out later on. It's definitely something that you don't want to avoid and you don't want to mislabel. Thank you so much for listening.